Josh. Will. Josh, the yeah. last time you were here at Gotta Run With Will, we talked a little bit about our mutual friend, Michael Ring. Yes, Michael Ring. Please give us an update how Mike is doing. He has made amazing progress over the past uh, five or six years since contracting that rare muscle disease. At the time, he was in a wheelchair, and now he is totally out of it. He had uh, several surgeries. He's been doing intensive physical therapy. Uh, back then, his goal was to finish his 30th marathon. Well, about two years ago, he did it. He walked the entire marathon and completed it. Which one, Queens? The New York City Marathon, yeah. Oh, yep. no yep. fooling around with him, no, New York no, City. No fooling around, and now he could... Um, Turn doorknobs, he could function more or less, you know, his, and he's... Uh, yeah, he has a very rare disease. I can't pronounce the name of it. With a rare disease called CIDP. Professionals call it chronic inflammatory demyelinizing polyneuropathy. Yeah. In fact, you did a film about it the yes. first time around? Right, right. When I did that first film, he was, he was wheelchair bound, but uh, I did a sequel uh, about uh, two years after that to show his... Uh, incredible uh, improvement in progress, uh, where I basically followed him throughout the whole uh, Brooklyn Marathon. I filmed him throughout the Brooklyn Marathon. I filmed him crossing the finish line. There are only 400 yards to go. A few members of my running club joined me in unison, knowing that I was only a quarter mile away from crossing that finish line. This was just after the 13 mile mark. Just after I turned onto the boardwalk, I was joined by so many of my teammates. They said I was like Rocky going for a run and being followed by all the kids in Philadelphia. But I wasn't focused on what was behind me. I was busy changing gears from walking to running. Oh my gosh, so he did Brooklyn to prepare for a special 30th. Right. You mentioned the doorknobs. I remember reading about, you know, how it's difficult for him to, uh, to use circular uh, objects like doorknobs. Yeah. And it turns out my building, my condo, is undergoing, we're redoing our hallways. And, and I'm so proud of them because when I saw that they were going to redo all our doors and replace them with levers. Yeah. So that it's more friendly to, you know, not only to the elderly population. Yes. Don't, may have to muscle, but also people that have that kind of, uh, you know, it's a symptom of the disease that it's very difficult for him to grip. Right. Well, he, Michael had a series of uh, surgeries with, to his hands where not only could he do all those maneuvers, but he could uh, do what is we refer to as the Holy Grail. You want to know what that is? The Holy Grail? Is yeah. it biblical? What no, is it? No. In his case, it's basically uh, the ability to wipe himself. Oh, my gosh. We certainly take that for granted. Yeah, right. Um, now, you were also mentioning that there are some, some kitchen products that yes, are... Yes, I know there's one company called OXO. They make, uh, it's approved by the American Arthri Arthritis Association. Uh, all the handles in, uh, on the products, they're, you know, household kitchen gadgets are larger with, uh, and rubber, so people with uh, mobility issues could use them. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Now... That was some time ago, and yeah. you, your kids were probably teenagers at that time. I, yeah. I, they'd grown up, and uh, tell us about, uh, I think one has moved out of the house? Yeah, one, uh, my daughter is 19 now, so she's been an adult for the past year. In fact, as soon as uh, she hit 18, she came back from school just to vote with me. Her first time? Her first time voting, yep, I was very proud of her. And now she's fit starting her second year at uh, SUNY Purchase. No, uh, 18, did you do a special film? Yeah, before? yes. Hey, Emma. Happy birthday. Thank you. I remember when I turned 18 years old. It's called The Edge of 18, and it was the moment that she became 18, and to, to show her leaving the home and the father sadly saying goodbye to her, knowing that she has to be on her own because she's an adult. Oh, it's that was sweet. Right. Want to express my feelings in a creative way by Excellent. making it. Yeah. Now, 
when we talked last time, you were also pacing all over the city. Is that a gig you continue to enjoy? Uh, yes, I, I still pace for the Rotor in this club. Um, I paced the Staten Island Half Marathon in the past, um, uh, Brooklyn Half, uh, New York City Half. Uh, in a few weeks, I'm going to be pacing a NYC Runs race. The Brooklyn Marathon is going to have, for the very first time, pacers. I'm going to be a five-hour pacer. I've been training, and I uh, look forward to that gig. Should be fun running, running uh, entirely through Brooklyn. Is it out in the streets or where? where um, is about it? half of the entire marathon is in the streets. Yeah. Excellent. It used to be entirely in Prospect Park, but Steve Lasto, uh, he he was able to bring. Uh, Steve roughly... Lasto is the guiding light for New York right. City runs. Right, right. I think they just celebrated their tenth year anniversary. Yeah, I think so. I, I think I think you're right. Yeah. So I guess it's a going concern. Yes. Now you also pays for one of my very favorite private clubs, the Mile High Run Club? Yes, a Mile High Running Club. Uh, they started making a presence, uh, they opened a new location on the Upper East Side in Yorkville last year. And uh, one of the uh, coaches from that club, somehow he found, he discovered me that I was a, a pacer for the Roadrunners Club. And he contacted me cold last year. He was looking for some pacers. Um, and I, I took the offer and I started pacing uh, New York City Marathon training runs last fall and for pay. So you could say I'm a professional pacer and um, <laughs> I'm still doing it. I love it. It's, um, if, you can make, if you can make money from, from something you love, it's great. That's a bonus. Yeah. That's a bonus. Now, we should mention that particular person, I believe, is the famous John Henwood. Yes. Olympian. Yes. A former Olympian. And I guess he's the marathon coach or one of the marathon coaches for the Mile High Run Club. That's right. You could say he's my boss. He's your boss, an Olympian. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Listen, on that note, thank you so much for coming in. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. This has been a Gotta Run With Will moment. 